So I was messaging back and forth with a Christian, and eventually we got to the question, why do I, as an atheist, need atheism? Why do I need atheism to believe in atheism, or why do I need it to win? Well, quite simply, I don't. I don't need atheism. I was a Christian before. I was perfectly happy and content with the idea that I was going to heaven to live in eternity and blissfully and happy and I was going to see all my old friends and my, and my grandpa and, uh, you know, all of that good stuff. Living forever was awesome and not going to hell was fantastic. I believed that before. And then all of a sudden, I was introduced to reasons and evidence that none of that was real. I was willing to believe in new evidence because I was raised that way. Particularly, I was raised that way in church. I went to a non-denominational church you know, spirit-filled, slain in the spirit, you know, blah, blah, blah. But we were taught that we would know Christians by their fruits. We were taught to test the spirits, as in, you know, figure out, you know, who was telling the truth and, if, you know, if it was really of God or, you know, if it was true or not. Um, but really it came down to, uh, you know, identifying who was a true Christian. Because if somebody was a true Christian... They could say whatever they wanted, and they could act all worshipful, and their hands could be up in the middle of church. But it was their fruits that would identify them as a Christian or not. Um, and so, with that, you know, we were introduced to the idea that hey, there is there is people that can fake, like people that can lie, that people that can be deceit that are deceiving me or trying to deceive me for whatever purpose they have. And we need to sort out who is telling the truth. And one of the ways you can do that is by judging their words and, you know, the things if they're quoting scripture and if they're quoting uh, you know, and things like that. And they, you know, there were signs, of course, that you're looking for. I'm not gonna go into detail. I mean, whatever. But I was being taught to investigate spirits, to investigate what is truth and who can be telling the truth and who can be lying. People lie for all kinds of reasons. People can misinterpret scripture and or uh, interpret it in a way that they want to. Um, and I, I really wish I could remember how my old youth pastor had tried to explain it, but you know, since then I've decided I'm going to put in bigger words. Um, and those in those bigger words were going to be essentially evidence is a physical manifestation of truth. Now, that may not be a perfect statement. Um, and it doesn't, you know, if you go into the epistemological circles and there could be, you know, whatever. But... You know, I was 11, and thir you know, 11 to 15 years old, and that made sense to me. And I mean, I'm sure anybody hearing that, that evidence is the uh, physical manifestation of truth, you know, it makes sense to you too. And so, you know, we started to put that filter through, you know, everything we're learning on what is truth and what is not truth. And so it was only a matter of time before I applied that filter. And eventually the Bible was put under that filter. And that's why I don't believe anymore. Of course, I find the whole claim that atheists need atheism, or that we need it to win, it's a little bit of projection on the Christian's part. I mean, let's think about the things that some Christians, again, point this out, some Christians, not all Christians, have to do to continue 
to believe the way that they do. To, so I'm going to focus basically those on that are literalist. These people have to believe that the earth was created 6,000 years ago and that every bit of science we have ever discovered that says otherwise is completely wrong. They have to posit an objectively, morally good God and then look at their word and see the times where it's actually him being subjective and then turn him into a judge and then basically justify and rationalize everything that he does that is contrary to his nature of being good. They have to redefine on a regular basis what God is and isn't as soon as some Christian or an atheist comes up with a different definition of what God really is. They have to pick and choose from their Bible what scriptures they choose to believe and which ones they don't believe and come up with justifications and rationalizations for those things. They have to uh, create doctrine such as the age of grace or age of accountability as I was taught it in church that says that kids up to a certain age you no longer have to worry about sin you know as if a kid dies you know to to, to rationalize the uh, the lack of care that God seems to have about all these kids in starving countries and in third world countries that are dying by the by the bucket loads every minute they even have to argue with their fellow brothers and sisters in Christ about what a true Christian is or the truth about evolution and uh, you know and science and all that good fun stuff and they even have to buy into the latest newest arguments that bolster their faith uh, without even a real justification for believing in it and they just know that so far it hasn't been defeated so therefore my belief system is justified because no one's beat it just yet and then when something changes they have to cling to the new belief you know presuppositionalism now is the new you know the the new hotness that's been going around at least on YouTube and now that it's getting its taint handed to it what will Christians hang on to next will they just go back to their Bible will they just go back to the word who knows maybe until the next thing comes around and they're gonna hang on to that they have to jump from strong tower to strong tower just to stay just to stay alive those signs where they have to avoid reality they have to change reality to rationalize what can only be seen as immoral acts they have to justify scriptures that contradict each other and scriptures that are inhumane of slavery and uh, well let's go with slavery slavery by calling it indentured servitude and completely avoiding every part that talks about actual slavery and ignoring, you know, uh, Noah's curse on his son Ham, saying that he would be a slave. They don't they ever talk about that. I have no answer for that. But they'll call it indentured servitude. And I had a whole three or four minutes of more of examples, but I don't really want to go there. This, this, this video is long enough as it is to get my point across. But I, I just wanted to point out is people that are, if you're literalists, fundamentalists you're guilty of these things you you're having to do these things meanwhile you have your fellow believers that are perfectly fine with uh, realizing that the human the Bible is a uh, you know humanly written book it was inspired by God but it was not divinely written um, and these people are still Christians. I mean, you may not agree with that, but, you know, they don't agree that you're a true Christian from the way that you're distorting the Bible, too. So, there. But why? Why 
uh, just really just try and think about them. Why do you have to dogmatically hold on to those literalist interpretations? You know that the, the early church fathers, they weren't literalist either. The Jews that wrote the, the Old Testament, wrote the Genesis story, they didn't think it was literally true either. They thought it was a metaphor. You can still be a Christian and, and not be a literalist. So why do you hang on so hard to the particular uh, beliefs and scriptures that you do? Why do you fight so hard, stretch the human imagination, uh, defy science, defy uh, logic and reason, defy your own fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, so you can continue to believe what it is that you believe? I don't know. But I'm going to leave you with, with this thought. Rationalization, justification, and masturbation. In the end, you're only fucking yourself. <laughs>